All right, hi everyone. My name is Guillaume. I'm a teacher here. When Joe. <laughs> When Joe asked me uh, to talk about a play I wrote and directed last year in New York, my main problem was to find a name for the presentation. And honestly, I couldn't choose. <laughs> it made me realize that it was a struggle for me in general to make decisions, <laughs> even to buy cookies, but also for life-changing decisions. And because I also realized that big decisions are actually at the core of some of most famous theater masterpieces. <laughs> I finally decided to name this presentation about my second career as a writer slash actor slash theater director to be or not to be a teacher. <laughs> that is the question. So I would like to go back to the roots of my problem, me in eighth grade. I was a very responsible student at the time. I didn't really have the choice. Both of my parents were teachers. <laughs> but I also love to make people laugh. And my Spanish grandfather, my biggest fan, gave me a nickname when I was a kid, El Payaso, which means the clown. So when I was a college student, I decided to study both literature and history. I couldn't choose again. <laughs> And on top of this, I started to take acting classes. When I moved to Paris, I started to be in a couple of shows. That's a couple of shows that I did back then. And then in 2010, I created my own company. But I couldn't choose a name for the company. So my friends decided for me after many, many, many drinks. And our company was named Adieu Charlotte, a very unnecessary dramatic name. We produced a couple of shows. And here's the first comedy that I wrote. And when I moved to New York in 2013, I had the possibility to do it again with some French comedians who live here in New York. And we, the company whose name is L'Actelier Théâtre uh, Company. So I've been actually playing for them in a couple of different shows. Uh, I've been playing in a show from Georges Fedot, La Dame de chez Maxime. It's a story of a young married man who woke up one morning in his bed with a woman who is not his woman and who has to make the difficult choice between telling the truth to his wife or writing a big check, as you can see on the picture. 2020, when the pandemic started, we had to stop different projects. And all people at that time were saying, when the pandemic is over, I will make big life-changing decision. Everything will be different. So that's when I started to, to write the play I was talking about at the beginning of the presentation, Le Monde d'Après, in English, On the Other Side. This play is the story of a family who gathers for the funeral of the youngest brother. It's funny. And <laughs> after a couple of minutes, they, this younger brother enters the apartment and they all realize that they're actually all dead. And a woman in the middle, God, enters too and explains to them that they are actually on the other side and they have to choose what they want to become in this new world. They have to decide if they want to continue to keep their name, their job, or even their husband, or if they are ready to completely change their life. So I really wanted people to ask themselves that question. If you had the possibility to change every part of your life without any consequences for anyone else, would you do it? Or is it just a fantasy? Because me, personally, I'm so indecisive that it will probably be a nightmare <laughs> if I have all these possibilities. But I am not alone. All these people here that you can see are not professional actors. They actually have another job. And they refuse to choose between their job and their <laughs> love for acting. And some of them are pretty busy. Uh, God, over there, works for the United Nations, for example. <laughs> so the play has uh, also been produced in Paris with a different cast. Um, it is still running now in Paris until end of December. Some of the actors are professional, but some of them are not. So again, they didn't want to choose between their professional and artistic life. Which brings me to my point. Maybe I am not the only one. Some studies showed recently that a lot of people spend more time in Netflix choosing a show <laughs> than actually watching it. And there is even 
a new trending world to qualify people like me. They have been called slashers. So I want everyone to take a minute and consider this. What if we shouldn't have to make decisions after all? Do you realize all the good things that could potentially happen and problems that could potentially disappear? <laughs> And I am not only talking about monogamy, I'm also talking about politics, no more fights between Democrats and Republicans, no more stupid debates between French people who think that you can say chocolatine and other people who really strongly think that you have to say pain au chocolat. <laughs> what I will say though, even I hear a lot of these quotes or another quote that I hate in life, you always have the choice. I know, that's my problem. <laughs> what I will know is that I strongly feel that me, when I decided not to choose between my teaching career and my actor career, it was actually the right choice because it gave me a balance. I kind of like one day to be surrounded by nice and very sweet actors, and then the next day to be yelled at by very angry teenagers who don't understand. <laughs> why I'm not on TikTok. So I would say this. Actually, I think I'm actually very good at choosing. So I used to be indecisive, but well, I'm not that sure. 